This is the B-Link ME Mini, a compact N150 based mini PC that can house up to six NVMe drives. Yes, it's cool, but it also sits in this weird gray area of being a low power, low cost mini PC versus a high end storage server. Let's talk about this guy and why I think it's worth taking a look at even with its quirks. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with the whole spiel about mini PCs. I feel like I've been saying the same thing for the last few years, which is basically many PCs have evolved to where 99% of people can run them as a low power server or a basic desktop for productivity with no real issues. This one is no different. It's got an Intel N150, which is a successor to the N100. It's only a marginal upgrade and keeps the same six watt TDP and four cores, but it does turbo a little bit higher. And yeah, six watts isn't gonna be melting any faces or creaming any genes with benchmark numbers, but it's not really designed to. This is a $300 system fully built that also includes 12 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigs of EMMC storage, and a two terabyte crucial NVMe drive. If you take anything away from this video, let it at least be that for the price, this thing is a fantastic value. All right, but the main appeal of the ME Mini is very clearly the six NVMe slots. You're probably thinking one of two things right now, either, Rat six NVMe drives, that's more than I can fit my gaming motherboard. Or, Rat six NVMe slots, why are we putting that many on an N150 system? And my response to both of those is, yes, we're gonna talk about that. But first, let's talk about the build itself. Immediately, I think this thing just looks nice. It is plastic, but it's all one piece, so it feels nice, and it's got this super cool design on the top exhaust that's supposed to be a clock for something. I don't know what art is. For ports on the front, we get two 10 gig USB ports, one of the type A and one of the type C variety, as well as the power button and some status lights. Around the back, we get a USB 2.0 port, dual 2.5 gig networking ports, HDMI, and the power input. A super underrated feature here is that the power supply is actually built into the device itself, so you don't need a power brick. Two points for that. To get inside, you'll have to remove the four rubber screw plugs on the bottom, and I recommend using a tool that actually works for this. Honestly, I don't know why they use those. The exposed recessed screws don't really bother me. Anyway, once those are off, the entire plastic shell slides off, revealing these super cool internals, and unlike me, this thing looks great naked. Almost wish I could just run it like this. On one side, you can see the three vacant NVMe slots, and on the opposite side, you'll see the other three where one should already be configured with that crucial drive. The third side looks to be the Wi-Fi card and antennas, and the last side is housing the power supply. Pretty neat little design being able to fit all of that into this tiny package. And immediately, I went to install two more drives and thought to myself, okay, there are six NVMe slots in here, and considering the N150 only has nine lanes of PCIe Gen 3, we have to be making some budget cuts somewhere. I looked in the user manual to see if they actually listed the speed of each slot, and surprisingly, they do. Expectedly, we are limited on five of the ports to PCIe Gen 3x1 speeds, which is one gigabyte per second. This is where the whole, why are you pairing an N150 with six NVMe drives argument comes into play. On one hand, yes, you're kneecapping the shit out of any modern NVMe drive you throw in here, but on the other hand, NVMe storage has gotten to the point to where it's just as cost effective as SATA SSDs, so why not get more speed and use less size and power for the same price? So I'm not gonna be holding it against this device that the drives aren't gonna be performing anywhere near their rated speeds, because again, it's not really designed for that. And after putting everything back together, I plugged it in and expected to be greeted with Windows and well, I was, but I was also greeted with a terrible fan noise. Okay, my mic wasn't running here, but here's me using some caveman brain logic to try to get the fan to stop clicking. I took it back apart and it seemed like the fan was hitting one of the screws underneath, so I just tightened them and the noise went away. Not great for QC, but maybe I just got unlucky. Unfortunately, this setup didn't get much better since my Windows install didn't want to load, but after a restart, it went through the install process, but it got hung up which really didn't matter at the end of the day because I just installed TrueNAS on here. I went ahead and did the basics, like set up a single drive pool on the two terabyte drive and a mirrored pool on the two one terabyte drives. And yes, you would never set up a single drive pool in ZFS, but this was just for testing. I don't know why I'm even talking about this. This isn't a TrueNAS video, but whatever. What I wanna do next is show you some performance. First off, let's just test sequential reads directly from the drive. We're getting just under one gigabyte per second, which is pretty much what we expected since we are limited by that single lane of PCIe Gen 3. I will note here that one of the NVMe slots, specifically slot four, does have two lanes dedicated to it, so you will get better speeds there. And conveniently, this is where the pre-installed drive will be. 
but most people will probably use this as a NAS of sorts, and in most cases, you're going to be limited by your network speeds anyway, and even with our kneecapped PCIe speeds, that's still the case here. Assuming you've bonded both 2.5 gig ports together for 5 gigs worth of bandwidth, that still translates to 625 megabytes per second, which is less than our 1 gigabyte per second PCIe Gen 3 by one speeds. Now, for being honest, how many people are going to combine those ports and going even further, how many people are even going to use more than gigabit networking? So yes, I get you want to pound your fist on the table and demand more lanes, but for what this device is, you don't really need it. You usually get to pick two from the triangle of low power, affordable, and high speed. And it's clear here that we've maxed out low power and affordable stats, considering that with my three drives installed, this thing sits at eight watts. And if you want to talk about raw performance, it's nothing too impressive. I ran Geekbench 6 and the results are what you'd expect from a four core six watt chip. Here is me scrolling through some recent CPU benchmarks that were uploaded to give you some kind of comparison. Does this mean that the N150 is bad? No, hell no. I've said many times on this channel that so many people overestimate how much raw power they need to run basic services like store sharing, web hosting, network services, Docker, and even a media server. I say media server because even though the N150 is a budget chip, it still has Intel's dope ass integrated graphics with their high quality transcoders. Basically, this means that you'll be able to run a Plex server on here with no issues whatsoever. Last thing I want to mention here is that when testing out drives, it's not always about the raw sequential throughput that matters. On the other side of the coin is random performance measured in IOPS or input output operations per second. This basically measures how quickly a lot of smaller files can be written to a drive. And when we look at the performance of NVMe drives versus a traditional hard drive array, it is vastly different. Just a single NVMe drive on this ME Mini has 10 times the IOPS than my big old fancy 12 hard drive pool on my main storage server. So yeah, there is a more tangible benefit even with those limited PCIe lands here. Okay. Let's wrap this up. I know this wasn't a deep dive on this device or anything, but I've seen enough of these to know what the capabilities are. Overall thoughts here, it's an extremely good buy for a very specific person. And that person is someone who is looking for an extremely low power, moderately capable server that needs or wants all flash storage. Is that you? Maybe, but hey man, even if you just think it's cool, then buy it anyway. I don't care for $300. It's an absolutely awesome device. Even if you don't add any more storage, it's capable, low power, small and quiet. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, then drop a like and subscribe. If you want to see more tech reviews, I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my big beefy NVMe storage server with full fat PCIe gen five by four lanes to each drive. Y'all are fast. And if you're still watching, you're EMMC. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.